Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Global Compliance Panel uh, to a live webinar on root, ca root cause analysis, uh, shutting down the alligator farm. Uh, my name is David, uh, your host for today, and on behalf of uh, Global Compliance Panel team, I would like to say thank you to everyone for taking part in today's webinar. Now, today's webinar will be presented uh, uh, by uh, Mr. Tony DeMarinis. Now, Tony has a BS degree in biology and microbiology and an MS in quality management. He is currently quality manager at uh, Sealed Air, a manufacturer of packaging for medical devices. Uh, previously, he was quality systems manager at CR Bard, director of quality assurance at Scott Laboratories, and senior microbiologist at the National Cancer Institute. He is a certified biomedical auditor and certified quality manager by the American Society for Quality. He also teaches refresher courses uh, for these certification programs through the local RIASQ section. Tony has over 20 years experience using quality management systems, techniques, and also value-added auditing, including he has a failure investigation and root cause analysis to improve process and products. Uh, we're really honored to have someone as distinguished as uh, Tony with us to present today's webinar. And now before we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outline for the session. Uh, the webinar, as you all may know, is for a 60 minutes duration. Uh, first, Tony will take you through the webinar, highlighting the areas that would be covered. And he would then share with you his presentation. Um, now, I would also request all to hold back your questions, as I mentioned before, um, your verbal questions until the Q&A session begins. However, I request you to send in your chat messages, um, chat questions to me, and I will pass it on to Tony uh, during the Q&A. Now, if for any reason you get logged out of the training session or the teleconference, um, you may follow the same procedure to join in back again. Um, I hope everyone is ready to start the session. I now request uh, Tony to take it from here. Tony? Hey. Uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, well, welcome to our session today. I'm always amazed, but uh, not, not too surprised, that no matter how many times I give this talk, there's never a shortage of people dealing with problems that want to hear it. Whenever people are involved, we'll have problems to solve, and we always will. Hopefully our discussion today will help you better understand the root cause of this universal problem. Some key points we'll be reviewing today uh, include uh, how to approach and, oops, David, I don't seem to have control of the Presentation. Just to, can we just click on the slide once? There we go. Okay. Okay. First, we'll talk about how to approach and identify root causes and the obstacles to improvement so that we can move from a reactive to a proactive environment. We'll talk about what are the root causes and the analytical methods to identify them. We'll also review some uh, quality tools and interrelationships and system thinking and how the organization structure and the environment actually supports and encourages problems. This is why the talk is subtitled Shutting Down the Alligator Farm. We'll also talk about stra uh, the strategy for robust corrective actions to prevent a recurrence and how to document the uh, failure investigation. Lastly, we'll open it up for some qu uh, questions and answers. And as uh, David said, you can type them into your chat box and, we'll, and uh, I'll address them at the end. But before we get too far, far along, uh, we need to agree on what exactly an alligator is. So an alligator, Excuse me, is any problem that you're dealing with today that threatens your livelihood likely to get bigger if it's not addressed than it could or should have been previously prevented? I'm sure many of you have dealt with an alligator already this week. Some examples include back orders, supply issues, rework, rejects, changes, complaints, recalls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the focus of most problem solving, problem solving efforts in our talk today. The first step to improvement, though, excuse me, the first step to improvement is seeing these issues not as the problem but only, as only downstream symptoms of some upstream event or decision or policy. If the improvement efforts are only directed at the log jam in front of us, uh, then we may clear the flow today, but if we don't address where the blockage is coming from, we're only, gonna fix, we're only fixing the symptom and the problem will come back. So today we're here to learn more about failure investigation root cause analysis, so we're not always fighting the alligators and we can devote our time to fighting eagles. Now, eagles are the exact opposite of alligators. They're any project or policy or initiative that captures market share devours the competition, and soars to great heights and profits our careers. Okay? Uh, when in, most, uh, in most cases, uh, we're in a reactive mode, uh, and you have to think of them, again, as downstream symptoms. So back order supply issues are only downstream symptoms of the decisions we made when we selected our supply channels or the assumptions and methods of preparing for our market demand. Rework, rejects, changes, other product uh, uh, after product launch are only symptoms of practices and policies for assuring a robust product design and the thoroughness of our validation activities. Complaints and recalls, et cetera, they're only downstream symptoms of appropriate and effective quality planning and preventive actions up front during the design and process development process. 
employee issues like performance problems, absenteeism, turnover, only symptoms of current hiring practices, training, and as well as our motivation, reward, and personal development practices. Okay, so again, these things are all downstream symptoms of some upstream uh, uh, thing. In short, you're up here, you know what, and alligators. Now, there's a fundamental fact. No one goes out and intentionally produces a full-grown alligator. It develops over time after the initial event. The feedback loop is open due to the inability to connect the cause with the effects over time. This frequently puts us in this firefighting mode to correct the problems. So let's take a closer look at where alligators come from. As you know, my degrees are in biology and microbiology, so I often see situations where nature provides a model for what happens in the, in the material world. Uh, in, in nature, for instance, you have a father and a mother. You get an egg, a little bit of time, you have more alligators. Well, it, it, in, the, in, the, in the organizational world, the real world, uh, what you have is uh, the father playing the role of uh, top management, or top management playing the role of the father. He has little investment or risk, but he is the deciding factor. Management is not just out to take advantage of the organization. They're trying to produce eagles and generate lots of profits. Remember the, eagle, the eagles are, remember, the good eggs produce the eagles. They soar to great heights. The bad eggs are the alligators, and they'll eat the eagles if given the chance. The problem is, if you've ever seen uh, an alligator egg and an eagle egg, most of them look alike unless you look real, real close. In biology, we had a technique called candling, where if you held the egg up to a very bright light, you can actually see the embryo inside. But remember, it's management's job to look at the big picture, not at the details. So uh, the result is that you have decisions that are made without data or not enough data to do it right, or poor training. Now, everyone else serves the role of the mother. They hatch and they nurture that, uh, that policy or whatever, and, and this is where the implementation occurs. They have a big investment in time and energy, and they're oblivious uh, as to whether it's a good egg or a bad egg. Uh, I have yet to see a mother that will admit they have a bad or an ugly child. They have a vested interest in all the eggs, both good and bad, because they're making them grow. So orga the organization is acting like an incubator to grow these eggs, and they don't care if they're an alligator or an eagle egg. Now, the fact is, once an alligator hatches, it takes on a life of its own, and the people who hatched it have a vested interest in keeping it around. So it's difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of them. Philip Crosby once said, problems breed problems, and the lack of a disciplined method of openly attacking them breeds more problems. So there's that breeding going in. So again, these things take on a life of their own, and they, and they propagate. All right, here's a typical problem-solving flowchart for some organizations. The first off, is it working? Yes. Don't mess with it. No problem. Okay? On the other hand, did you mess with it? Yes. Or no, I'm sorry, no. Will it blow up in your hands? No. Just look the other way. Again, no problem. Unfortunately, if you did mess with it, you idiot. Does anyone else know? No, just hide it. No problem. Now, if someone else does know, or it will blow up, your history. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you'd get fired, but you may go down in the annals of, of, uh, of the, your, your company and uh, you're on the slow track to promotion and everything else. Um, unless, can you blame someone else? Yes, no problem. Unfortunately, no, you're, you're still history. So if you think about these things, uh, you may have giggled a little bit as we uh, went through this. Um, at least it happens when I, when I do the presentation live. Uh, I originally received it as a joke, but it reveals some troubling system problems that are true for a lot of organizations. And if you're giggling, then you probably think, <coughs> excuse me, that it's true for your organization as well. First thing I'd like to look at is the two terms up at the top, mess with it. <clears throat> this denotes a resistance uh, uh, to change. Mess is a negative connotation usually to be avoided. Critical precursor to re real improvement is realizing that there might be a better way and a willingness to pursue it. I know when my mom, uh, when my room, uh, my mom said my room was a mess, it wasn't the time to go and ask her for the car keys. Sec uh, the next one we have here is you idiot. Another negative label, it's instill fear of failure in, in any risk takers that are out there. And your history, the fear of failure is even amplified by punishment. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, this may be real punishment or just a threat, but an individual's perception dictates the culture. You can say bye-bye to your bonus or you're on the slow track and, or, to, or no promotion or you're the first to be terminated or demoted. There's a subtle management message here, don't take risks, okay? Some of my favorites are hide it and look the other way. This is a behavioral response to fear or, of failure. Sometimes just mentioning the problem, it's a career limiting move like the elephant in the living room that no one wants to talk about. Both prevent efficient operations and encourage the big game hunter. 
And the, the biggest one of all is can you blame someone else? This one's even worse. This diverts attention from the real problem. People are diverting resources to watch or defend their backside. And if you've ever made an extra copy or added an extra CC to an email to prevent being blamed, uh, uh, you, you've seen this. This is, this is anti-lean, and it really only works for top management. Now, if this culture exists at any organizational level, the most likely result of any failure investigation will be what you see at the bottom. No problem, a status quo, and life goes on. <clears throat> now, between problems, we're all sitting fat and happy, just like this mother and her eggs. However, as time goes by, the eggs hatch, and they don't seem like big problems at first. Often they're disguised and nurtured by the organization based on current beliefs and policies and culture, and they can surface anytime, and their size really depends on you. Eventually, they grow too big to hide or ignore. So in short, you have the alligator farm. These are two of my favorites here. The biggest one is you know, getting blamed by something else. So that's where the talk comes from. And you'll continue to have problems until you sort out the alligator eggs and shut down the incubator. An alligator farm prospers when we address the symptoms only, gives you, giving you that reactive mode, that firefighting. Remember the, addition, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. The first step in any failure investigation, uh, if you go to, back to the words of Demings, his uh, point number eight is drive out fear. Remember how the people involved in the Gulf oil spill, the recent Gulf oil spill, stopped talking once the press got, in, got wind of possible criminal charges. A lawyer's first advice is to keep your mouth shut. How can you get to the root cause in that type of environment? Management needs to establish an environment free of blame. If people, if, if people instead of the system, are blamed for mistakes, system problem will remain unresolved and the problems will recur. Okay? Before we get too far along, though, let's agree on some other definitions. First is a failure. Any out of specification result or other adverse indication from a previously qualified product or operation that exceeds the frequency predicted during product development. Uh, and the abbreviation for that would be OOS or out of spec, all right? The second one is a mistake. This is a variable that's attributed to natural human error. The minute you take people and put them into an out of spec result, you get the oops. Now, experience is the name that we give our mistakes. That was once said by uh, Oscar Wilde, an Irish poet. And another, uh, another great saying is uh, a mistake is an event, the full benefit of which has not yet turned to your advantage. That was uh, said by Ed Land of uh, Polaroid. Another definition is root cause. This is the most basic reason for an undesirable condition or problem, which if eliminated or corrected, would have prevented it from existing or occurring. Another good definition is a sentinel event. This is an incident that must be investigated and fixed due to death or serious injury or, un or a significant financial loss. In other words, the failure is so serious, it makes the headlines, unlike the elephant in the living room that no one talks about, this one can't be ignored because it makes the morning sentinel. Uh, you'll also notice the yin-yang signal that I uh, put in the background here. The Japanese word for problem actually has a dual meaning of both challenge and opportunity. This is a reminder that in every problem there's an opportunity to learn something and improve the process. They expect to make mistakes and learn from them. I've got uh, uh, another quote for you, and uh, the, the, uh, I went to Penn State, so I'm very familiar with the next one. Joe Paterno just, uh, just uh, uh, won his 400th game, uh, the most in any college coach history. He, he's, he was fond of saying, you never learn anything by doing it right the first time. And if you do get it right the first time, did you get it right because you got lucky or because you knew what you were doing? You never really know. But if you do it wrong the first time, figure out what you did wrong and fix it, now you've actually learned something about it. So that's, uh, that's the challenge, is figuring out what the opportunity is in every problem that's there. So uh, we've all seen these types of problems here. Uh, the fact is that correcting the root cause prevents a recurrence and the cost of poor quality goes down. You have less internal and external failure costs, not to mention savings from increased efficiency and less expediting. So it pays to take the time to investigate and get to the bottom of the problem. But there's a paradox. Why do so many investigations stop short?